It has been an action-packed week here in Las Vegas for AWS reInvent 2021. I'm gonna hit the most significant announcements from the biggest AWS event of the year. Let's go. This week, the AWS community gathered in person in Las Vegas. There were five keynotes, hundreds of sessions, and all of the energy you would expect from reInvent, which again, we haven't seen since 2019. So for this update, throw out everything you think you know about Cloud Tracker. I'm bringing in special guests with a different format, and frankly, I'm trying to fit in an epic amount of content into this episode. Let's kick things off with the storage, data, and analytics announcements. Data was a key focus of the announcements across all of the keynotes. One key theme was making it even easier to process large amounts of data while reducing the work you have to do to maintain the infrastructure. The featured announcement in this category was that there are now serverless and on-demand versions of several critical services around data analytics. We now have serverless versions of Elastic MapReduce, or EMR, Redshift, and Managed Streaming for Kafka, or MSK. In addition to these serverless options, we now have an on-demand version of Kinesis data streams. Now, since this is on-demand, you don't quite get all the benefits of serverless as you'll have to pay a base cost whether you use it or not. However, you no longer have to worry about managing the infrastructure. The three serverless offerings are all in public preview, but the on-demand option for Kinesis data streams is generally available. In addition to this, we have a ton of other announcements in this space. The first one affects DynamoDB users, as there is now an infrequent access table class, resulting in up to 60% savings over the standard table class. Now, one of the great things about this is that you don't have to migrate your data to a new table to take advantage of this, because you can seamlessly switch the table class at any point. Now, also, Amazon is making it possible to bring even more SQL Server workloads into the cloud with RDS Custom for SQL Server. So if you have specific requirements for your SQL Server applications that weren't possible in RDS previously, you should check this out. It can now accommodate a lot of new use cases. Now, finally, we have a new archive storage class in Amazon S3 with Glacier Instant Retrieval, which provides access in milliseconds to your archived objects. Now, the best part of this is that it integrates with intelligent tiering to make it seamless to transition your objects to the correct storage class. Next up, I'm going to hand it over to Scott from A Cloud Guru to hit on even more announcements from reInvent. Well, hello, beautiful people. My name's Scott Fletcher, and I'm with A Cloud Guru. And for the featured ML announcement, we have SageMaker Canvas. And it's a perfect example of how AWS is continuing to make machine learning even more accessible. This visual tool gives people who are not data science experts the ability to get actionable insights using the AWS console. Users can bring their own data or leverage existing data services like S3. Now you will need to tell the service what you want to predict, but the service will try to automatically select the best algorithm for the use case. But wait, there's more. We can also easily shuffle all that work over to SageMaker Studio and data science colleagues can then refine the model from there. We also learned about SageMaker Studio Notebook, which enables users to integrate EMR work into their SageMaker notebooks. With this, we now have one place for all of the data prep, analytics, model, training, and optimization that we could ever want. Speaking of model training, AWS covered in great detail how they are improving the training speed for some of the most complex models. A vital part of this is the Trainium chip. During the CEO keynote, they announced that the new TRN1 instance, which uses this chip, are now available in preview. Next, AWS realized that labeling data is a massive bottleneck for most of their customers, so they announced Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth Plus. This service connects companies with data labeling professionals for a wide variety of data types. Amazon also announced a preview of Serverless Inference, which offloads all the heavy lifting of managing the infrastructure for inference and remembering to scale down when your resources aren't being used anymore. Now this option is available when creating a new SageMaker inference endpoint in supported regions. Finally, AWS announced a free, yes, free as in vendor swag at a tech conference way to learn machine learning on AWS with SageMaker Studio Lab. This service gives users a set amount of storage and compute and you only need an email address to get started. You can also migrate your work into an AWS account when you're ready to take things to the next level. Next up, I'll be handing over to Matthias to hit on all the developer announcements for this week. 
Hey there, I'm Matthias, also from ACloud Guru. So, for our featured developer announcement, we have the new Amplify Studio. This new low-code approach to building web and mobile applications provides a visual app creation environment for React. Some people have said that this is kind of like Visual Basic for web apps. Now, one of the things you'd expect about this is that it makes it easy to integrate with services that Amplify supports, and you'd be correct. But one of the things you might not expect is that this also integrates with Figma, one of the most popular tools that designers are using to create these sorts of applications these days. So check out the link in the episode notes to get even more information on how all this works to help developers and designers create both front-end and back-end of web and mobile applications. And that's truly good stuff. <laughs> but wait, there's more! <laughs> the developer and infrastructure announcements certainly did not end there. We saw the new version of AWS's Cloud Development Kit, CDK v2, become generally available. Now, this is an update over what Werner announced in his keynote, where he said that it was in preview, but it's not. It is actually generally available. Also, for you CDK enthusiasts, there is now the CDK Construct Hub, making it even easier for you to find available CDK constructs that you can integrate into your CDK stacks. All right, CloudWatch also had a few exciting announcements this week. The first is real user monitoring. This feature measures your user's experience by having a snippet of JavaScript that you include in your web applications, then upload performance and behavioral data straight into CloudWatch for you to analyze there. Also, CloudWatch evidently was evidently announced, enabling you to handle both A-B tests and feature flags for your applications. Next, AWS announced in preview the next generation of their ARM chip with Graviton 3. According to AWS, Graviton 3 will deliver up to 25% more compute performance and up to twice as much floating point and cryptographic performance. You can start taking advantage of this today with the C7G instances in supported regions. Finally, call all your cloud colleagues together to mourn the death of the AWS forums. And by mourning, I mean celebrate, because I'm not sure anyone is too sad to see those go, especially because we now get AWS Repost, which is a Stack Overflow type experience managed by AWS and provided as a part of their AWS free tier. You can dive in and start using this new tool today. Well, that's all for me. So I'll hand you back to our true cloud tracker guru, David Tucker. So I wanted to come back and call out one other critical area in the cloud, sustainability. We have seen Google and Microsoft both make this a focus in the cloud this year, and AWS made it clear that they're going to as well. Now, there are two key things that they announced at reInvent. First up, AWS has announced that they will be releasing their carbon footprint tool for AWS customers in the near future. This tool will enable organizations to track their current carbon footprint and predict the future footprint based on their existing workloads. Also, we have seen the addition of a new sustainability pillar to the well-architected framework, the first new pillar since its release in 2015. Now, I think there will be much more to come in this area in the years ahead. Thanks for joining Scott, Matias, and me for Cloud Tracker here from AWS reInvent. Remember that you can get links to everything we've discussed in the episode notes. Be sure to come back next month to get all the updates on AWS here on Cloud Tracker. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs>